Okay, right, so where did it all start? Uh, well, you have to remember that I'm, I was brought up on, on Lago and when I came over to this country, I, um, I couldn't drink real ale for a long, long time. It must have been about 15 years. Uh, and then some good friends of mine in Watford, Cloud, Bunyard, uh, Mick the Dog, Paul and uh, Mel and a few others who are sadly not with us today, uh, they I'd say almost conned me, telling me they were going to a beer festival in St. Albans. And um, uh, I thought we were going to a big lager beer festival, big long tables and buxom women walking around with steins, but it was the complete opposite from that. And I, I think the, the look of disappointment on my face was very clear when we got there. Um, and Clive took me aside and he said, look, just go and try halves. Don't do a whole pint of each because you won't get through it. So do little halves and find one that you like and stick to that. And uh, uh, true to his word, I found the very, very first half pint that I went for, I fell madly in love with Real Ale, and that was a Tring side pocket for a toad. Everybody knows it very well, uh, known beer. Um, and I was working in the city at the time, um, and also very much involved with grassroots rugby at a wonderful little rugby club called uh, Watford Rugby Club. Small rugby club. So one day um, the then first team captain came to me and said he wanted to uh, run a beer festival as part of their open day that they hold every year uh, in order to attract senior players. Um, and uh, as I mentioned to you, I was working in the city at the time, um, and there was one particular pub that I used to frequent, uh, right outside Houston Station, a fantastic pub that's knocked down now because of HS2, a pub called the Brie Louise. And I had become very, very close brother of uh, Craig Douglas and his and and his wife. Karen, who used to own it, uh, and uh, my love for beer was enhanced through them because of the very, very good quality that they had at that pub all the time. Um, and the reason, the, the secret to their success was twofold. Number one was uh, they had amazing food, uh, particularly pies that they used to make, and secondly, they used to change their beer every week, so it was like an adventure. Every time you went in, there was an adventure. In, anyway, cut long story short, uh, Craig and I uh, got together, and instead of going small, like a few beers, we went super large, 48 beers, and a four-day beer festival. Um, and through that process, uh, I've run that beer club, that uh, beer festival every year for now, about uh, nine, 10, 10, 11 years. And I established a, a, uh, a network, so to speak, with uh, local breweries um, to the extent of even brewing beer with them, collaborating on beer with them uh, after I was able to smuggle a bit of South African hops through uh, after a holiday from South Africa, which you can't get in this country. It's a terrible thing. Anyway, so, so I'd established this uh, network of suppliers and a good reputation and um, I, I basically, when my brother came to me and said, let's open up a micro pub, I didn't even know what a micro pub was. And he took me up to a pub in, in, uh, in um, Coventry. Uh, and I was all over it like a rash. This was a, a midlife crisis dream come true. And so we, we hooked up uh, with the local estate agents and we, we found this little spot, which was a booking shop. Uh, and we found it in February 2018. And uh, we, 
started up our social network uh, account and we started advertising to Hamill that uh, we were going to open up a, a, a real ale micro pub. Now, I have to take two steps backwards here uh, and tell you that um, everybody who we spoke to, bar from two people, told us not to do it. They, they warned us against Hamill. They said there were no beer drinkers in Hamill and there isn't the kind of spirit to open up a pub of this caliber. Um, everybody just talk, talk, talked us, tried to talk us out of it. Um, bought from two people. Um, number one is a, a mate of mine who I call Boxmore Dave, and that's because he was chairman of the Boxmore Trust. And I think a co-founding member or something to that degree. And another chap called Phil, um, who's the sweetest little three-legged dog. Uh, and they both used to drink at the uh, Camelot Rugby Club. I got involved with Camelot because when we moved to Hemel, my son Max uh, decided he wanted to change rugby clubs. And they are a fantastic club um, who are super supportive of local businesses and, and everything to do with the community. Uh, they do the uh, Gar Fox fireworks down there every year and, and raise thousands and thousands of pounds for charity. Um, so, so these two said to us, don't hesitate, go for it. And so we found this, um, we found this little betting shop and uh, it's a double uh, unit uh, owned by Jennings. Well, they've signed a 25 year lease um, and um, they wanted to sublet it because they closed the betting shop down. So we in, in we came and there was a, in that far corner over there, there was the counter where you used to go and put your bets uh, with a glass partition and, a, and a, a bar section at the bottom. And then the floor on the other side was raised ever so little. And then off this back wall over here, there was these huge, this huge TV bank. So it was a big wooden uh, uh, MDF structure TV banks of timber um, with a whole bunch of TVs all across it. And of course, that's where they used to uh, watch the horse racing and all that kind of stuff. And then people used to, there were counters around here where people used to uh, place their bets. We had a kitchen over there we had a toilet, one toilet over there, uh, and that was it. So myself and Des, uh, who I grew up with, uh, obviously, and uh, we, um, we got to work and we started stri stripping the place down, taking all the screws out, and we, um, we recycled probably about 70% of the material we had in here, but there was a lot of mess, cables and wires and all sorts of nonsense that came out of here the mess was just unreal and uh, so we, we started building this place and uh, so we're kind of moving on to the next point by the way um, is how was it built well the truth is because of the social media um, the social media that we had been putting out there this pub was built with mine and Des's bare hands, but also the local community who were now getting excited. I mean, I put out a call one day uh, that we needed help because we couldn't put a skip out here and we had a ton of stuff to throw away. So we used to load it into our cars and take it to my residential address and I used to put it in there. And um, I put out a call one day on social media uh, that we needed help inside because people were offering uh, and the next minute we had a war party of about eight both male and females included and uh, we emptied this place within two or three hours of a mountain of crap uh, we filled a skip basically uh, with that so so the community got very very involved right from the very beginning and and uh, I have to say camera identified that something good was on its way 
and we got a lot of help from them. And uh, we had Jared, who's the current chair of the Mitchelton branch, came over. So we had Jared do an interview with us, and he put it in the paper, in the, the local uh, camera papers that we were building this. Um, as well as um, we had the the current treasurer of that same branch who was working the Great British Beer Festival. And he came to us, he said, look, the Great British Beer Festival's over. We've got a ton of glass left over that they're about to skip. Do you want some? So here we are, we ended up with free glass, uh, free publicity and free labor. And when you take a closer look around at this little place, we built it using our bare hands, uh, credit cards, personal savings, um, and many, many a late night. I mean, if you look at it, the skirting board is actually decking plank. Uh, even some of the shelves up there, it's decking planks, you know? And we didn't have a plan when we walked in here. I think the only thing that we bought was the bar countertop, which was not very much. And we had a, a very, very decent and very highly respected cellar engineer in the industry who used to work for uh, Rebellion Beer Company. He came in and, and put the, the python in, which is, carries the beer from the back cold room. And so all the timber that we took down from these TV banks and from the floor of the, of the betting bank, that all went straight back up onto the wall where we extended it out and we created our tiny little cold room and our tiny little kitchen so small we can't even fit a stove in there um, and so small we had to for hygiene purposes and thank god we did this because of COVID later but we installed a butcher's curtain across so that retained the cold from the chiller in there onto the barrels and and it became a real um a real challenge because we didn't have the space but uh thanks be to craig douglas of the brie louise that this furniture that I'm sitting at here, chairs, stools, um, and when we moved in, we've upgraded since, but when we moved in, we had Brie Louise beer pumps, we had Brie Louise, we still got the Brie Louise tilting racks, we got Brie Louise um, chillers that go into the gravity beer, so it's a, a contraption that you pump water through. They're still over there and still being used to this day, so in essence, this is uh, the offspring of uh, the Brie Louise, which makes me quite emotional because it was a fabulous pub that was destroyed by HS2 and they still haven't properly settled with the Douglases. Absolute disgrace. Um, and um, so, uh, you know, this is a child of the Brie Louise and the Brie lives on. Uh, and it's a wonderful thing. It's a beautiful thing uh, because everybody loved it. It was, I mean, that Craig used to go through, and, and and any publican watching this will tell you how good this is. He used to go through 189s, nine gallon barrels every 10 days. Such was the footfall. When they had to move out, they didn't want that stuff going to waste and, and they donated it free of charge to us so we were able to open this pub and then we just started adding bric-a-brac -bric, and then people started buying us stuff my sister bought us a lovely little uh, monk that sits up there now from Germany um, and everybody wanted to contribute people started bringing in trinkets little statues that they'd seen um, and uh, you know the character just started building and now I'm cursed by these punters bringing in these personal mugs I hate them but we keep them for them because it makes them feel that they have a stamp here not that they need it uh, so that's pretty much how it was built recycled screws and timber uh, uh, donated equipment kindness of heart and uh, that's when the certificates started to arrive very very 
close after that. And that leads us on to the awards that we got. So we did start, um, we did start at the beginning um, offering uh, discounts to camera members. And, uh, but times got really hard and, and the truth, truth is that 90% of the camera members that came in here ended up, because they wanted to support us, ended up telling us that they didn't want to, they didn't want their camera certificate. Such as the heart and soul of these people, they'd rather have persistence than, than uh, a cheap point. Um, and so the community, I, I think, uh, from the very first day when we opened here, we had a huge camera presence. Again, I think it's because of the social media uh, strategy that we utilized. I mean, I had these beautiful soft benches weren't here, these pews weren't here. Um, I'll come back to a story on the pews. Uh, but instead, in the back of this wall, we had my garden furniture benches. So my wife was quite uh, unhappy about that, that for at least two or three months, we had no benches around our garden furniture because they were in here. And they weren't the most comfortable of things. It was very, very hard and very raw in here. And um, uh, so, but nonetheless, on the first day, uh, the camera crew, the Mid Chilton branch, the committee and its members uh, came in here on the very first day that we opened and they sat here from about two o'clock in the afternoon until closing and just piled it in. The, the, the support from them was phenomenal, even in January, and they still do this, because they know of this idiotic idea of people who are not alcoholics deciding that they need to give up for a month to prove to themselves that they're not alcoholics. Uh, um, and it almost brings a number of pubs to their knees, including ourselves. So on our very first uh, uh, dry January, which is a swear word in this pub, um, uh, they, the committee, um, went on a, and they do it every year, they went on a, on a pub crawl. And they draw a whole bunch of all their members in, and they do, they stop off at various pubs. Uh, and similarly, they, they did that and they came over here and they sat here and they pumped money in, which I'm going to promise you, absolutely stopped us from going under. Very, very simply because they, um, they didn't want us to fail. Uh, and that did carry us through. We, we got through uh, our very first dry January after opening up in November and it was a, a big wake up call for us. Um, to hold on to all any of our liquidity as much as possible so um and through i think i think through that committee and and them seeing how religious we were with regards to seller hygiene uh you know we, we have a strict we have two strict rules number one is you line clean every seven days and uh and you change your beer some people will say after three days, not necessary if you're chilling it properly with deep probe chillers and or a decent chill, chill room. Um, uh, we change our beer irrespective of how full the barrel is after every seven days. Don't we, Georgie? Absolutely, mate. So they saw this and then the very first award we got was, um, and they are up in order of how we received them, the very first award we got was Best Newcomer. And that was after three months of trading. Now, word on the street was the committee, certain members of the committee wanted us in that first few months to get Pub of the Year, um, and they campaigned for it. But head office turned around and said, no, can't do that. Uh, part of the criteria for getting pub of the year it's the hint is in the name is you've got to be open for a year you see uh, so we had to wait for that one but we did get it 
we did get pub of the year at the end of 2019 we got pub of the year and um, I think very shortly after that we were for the first time in the good beer guide um, we were in the good beer guide two consecutive years even through the COVID pandemic um, and that was a shock to the system um, because uh, COVID put me in a three and a half week coma um, and in a hospital for eight weeks um, and when I woke up from my coma up in a strange place in Addenbrooke's hospital in, uh, in Cambridge I couldn't believe that the whole country had shut down um, and that the pub was closed but we were thriving because the punters were trying to support us and we had queues of people out the back collecting takeaways um, we were only putting on five gravity beers um, and everybody was trying to buy just for the sake of buying not not because uh, they needed it really who needs beer that desperately beeraholics like myself I suppose but nonetheless they were coming in here and taking our uh, two litre milk bottle plastics uh, away from the back door and uh, it was wonderful and I, I woke up from my coma in, in uh, May, uh, no, April almost three years ago to the date and they discharged me on my birthday of that year, May 2020 and of course I had to recover from that because I don't know if you know what happens when you have a coma and it eats up all your muscle mass and, and I've got damaged goods I've got I've got war wounds that you get bored listening to um, and then the restrictions were dropped and we had to have very strict uh, seating arrangements and then the food which we had never done and so we had our staff making 140 160 paninis that we had to fork out for you don't buy that um, food uh, for free and we we had a little a little griddle that we were pressing paninis on and then we were allowed people in and, and the, the rules were quite ridiculous uh, you had to walk in to this little place with your mask on but only when you were seated could you take your mask off and you could order your panini and uh, then you were able to order a pint which you had to have table service so our starving costs uh, doubled because now we need a table service I've gone off track of the camera awards uh, so I'm going to come back to the camera awards now um, so so we got our pub uh, best newcomer then we got pub of the year then we were in uh, the good beer guide for two years then we got uh, cider pub of the year after we returned in the good beer guide for a third time and then this year we've kind of cleaned up we've cleaned up with three awards I almost feel guilty um, and the the awards that we got this year were um, runner-up pub of the year so we came second as pub of the year uh, we got runner-up cider pub of the year uh, in both of those um, instances losing to exceptional pubs one pub that I personally absolutely adore both the pub and the people who own it um, which is the the rising sun in uh, Burke Hampstead, we lo they, they got side of the year, but then they totally deserve it. They've got 10 or something ridiculous ciders, and um, it's a fabulous pub. It has, it has the ethos, uh, it has the ethos of love and tolerance, something that we've tried to aspire to. I always joke with, with, the, with the owners that one day when I get big, I'm going to be I'm going to grow up to be just like them 
but um, yeah, so we lost to them, but we did win the, uh, which I think is our most prestigious, prestigious award is, is the Community Pub of the Year. Um, and that's, I think, not down to the pub, that's down to the people in the pub. So I always say that Community Pub of the Year is less of a an award for monks in, but it's more of an award in recognition of the people that drink here, the Monconians who are um, a tribe unto their own, absolute, absolute tribe unto their own. So let's talk about these Monconians. Where does that word come from? The word comes from the people themselves. So, uh, this being monks in, the punters who, who started frequenting from day one and are still coming here, they call themselves Monconians. Uh, and they've got their own little Facebook page. Um, they, and the reason is they wanted a place where they could talk to each other and make a few jokes about whatever. Um, I, I want you to keep uh, the Monks in Facebook page very, very strictly about beer and very professional. And um, they wanted their own place so that they could have fun. And, and the, the name started off like that. And, and then the apparel started to follow. And uh, then the pool team arrived and they took the word Monconians and split it in half. And the pool team are called Monk Onions now, I suppose, because they're full of layers. Um, and uh, the people of this pub are, are it's, it's as diverse as the product um, I have my theories on how that happened and why it happened but, but needless to say you know we have an LGTBQ community uh, who feels safe when they come in here we have beer tickers, pensioners, they are my bread and butter. Um, we have uh, your uh, Viking, Viking Goths, I almost want to call them. These are the rockers who come in and, and sink all the cider. We've got rugby players who come in and you'd be surprised they drink more gin than the women do. Um, We've got the bohemian hippies, the 20 year olds who've been through life and they're into music and they know everything and it's great and everything, life is wonderful. And they, but the, the thing that they bring uh, to the pub is, is a respect for mental well-being. Um, we've got the modern day adults who are absolute crazies, uh, love to sing songs and uh, have fun in here playing pranks on each other um uh, we've got uh, uh, and when i say tickers i mean actual tickers people who come in we've got one guy who comes here his name's roy lovely bloke he's actually got three little black books little black books we're not talking digital tickers there's many of them um uh, one of them, Hugh, he's a he's a good beer, he's a very highly respected beer blogger. He, when we celebrated our fourth year anniversary to the day, he celebrated his one thousand pint in here. I made sure that his one thousand and one was free. Um, but Roy is different. Roy's got a he's got three little black books, and he's got alphabet uh, for the breweries, and then for each page under that brewery. A list of beers and years and little blocks where he ticks and this year I had this beer actual ticks with a pen and paper which is unheard of in this day and age you know th this is the kind of clients that we have in here a lot of foreigners myself included strong Polish community and they just lovely people you know so the the, the client base is extremely diversified very, very diversified and the beautiful thing is that everybody tolerates 
You know, there is no homophobia, there's no xenophobia. Well, there can't be because then they're dealing with me. We don't tolerate racism. Religious intolerance is completely unacceptable. Never mind, it's not spoken about. In, in uh, that's a bit of a uh, uh, a contrast because we're monks in. Um, and you know, we're all about respect for all, and we all hate war. And you know, we have the de- the, the the decor of motorcycle riders that that frequent here, and that group in themselves is extremely diversified. We've had very few crazies come through the pub. Um, they, don't, they don't seem to last, and I don't know why, and I'm talking staff and customers. The, the crazies, people who want, who are aggro, people who are needy, uh, uh, more needy than they are in giving, it, it just doesn't really, it doesn't happen here. Um, and so I'm very proud of that, and I think that uh, that you'll find that um, uh, that is why people feel safe here. I get comments from women, especially, often, to say that I don't know why it is, but in Hamel, this is a pub that they feel safe in. They feel that they can come in here on their own and they're not going to get poured either visually or physically and they can have a little drink and they can calm down and have a conversation with their friends and, and not be interfered with, so to speak. And I think that that's like, uh, I think that that is a, a feeling that has taken shape itself uh, with the pub. And uh, I mean, I'm proud of it. I love it. I absolutely adore it. And I think that diversity um, I think just to just to touch on on how different these people are and their backgrounds. I, I think the people who come in here have all had it difficult. They've all been through the mill. They they know what it's like to battle. They're grafters, hard grafters. They know what it's like to battle, and they have a, a, a an empathy. For people who are going through hard times and uh, it was evident right from the start when um, the very first I don't know if you know that we our neighbors are the Salvation Army Salvation Army are notorious for being anti-alcohol and anti-pubs and they were actually before we opened and before we met them and became their best neighbors ever uh, they, they objected to the pub but we got through that with the help of Decorum, uh, who are an amazing business partner. The, the ability to, to, to keep going, to break through all the troubles that we've had, I think is down to two things. Number one, it's, it's the, the nature of the punters who come in here. But I'm going to say at this stage that Decorum Council have bent over backwards for me. I think that they recognized what was starting to build here. One councillor in particular, his name is Rob Beecham. He is unfortunately a Tory, but it doesn't matter because he's got a beautiful heart and I love him dearly as an individual. And, and it's never easy when you're working for a company that sucks, but the man himself is beautiful. And he, he, um, uh, he helped us get all those he helped us navigate and say that word uh, through the bureaucracy that is any council and there's a lot of it um, to get our seating out the front chair and all that kind of stuff I think the, the punters recognized what Rob was doing for us and um, it became evident in the very first uh, Christmas that we went through I think Christmas of 2019 we got to know about Salvation Army doing a Christmas lunch for the local aged people and, and homeless and that kind of stuff and uh, these guys got involved and, and from the very first first Christmas that we had you we were able to raise enough funds to fund their Christmas lunch we bought all their meat we took in 600 quids worth of meat and veg um, you know 
that we donated to them for them to cook for the local community and it went from strength to strength the charity just huge when I opened up my own charity called AngelNet which was I wanted to give something back to the nurses for looking after me and um, they um, we, I started doing walks and, and the, 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 the locals started joining me they started joining me on these long walks from from Watford we walked from there to here and we raised twelve and a half grand and uh, um, we were able to take these nurses out to uh, for mental well-being decompression PTSD decompression um, and then take and then feed them a night of, of booze and food and all that kind of stuff we took the whole of Stoke Mandeville out and uh, it was wonderful uh, and then when the Ukrainian war started uh, within the first three weekends this little pub with a, with the partnership of Watford Polish uh, Club uh, we processed and donated 35 tons of aid to Ukrainian refugees 35 tons in three weekends it was chaos absolute chaos in here and at the buttery which we had um, so I, I don't know why I don't know why they're so dedicated but I'll tell you what it, it never ends it gets better and, and I'll tell you a little story about one Christmas the last Christmas we had it gets me very emotional I'll tell you I'll tell you that story and I, and I think that they are dedicated to charity and they're dedicated to the pub because they feel safe that's what it is there's diversity here in the product and they know that they can come and have a bit of a crack and a bit of banter um, I mean the, the biggest banter that I get and they've even started raising money from it is they um, they've got these mugs now because we have a bit of a joke and they say shit pub shit beer shit landlord now they've got them on mugs and they sell those mugs and we've we've raised money uh, for UNICEF we've raised money for Salvation Army um, through the sale of these products uh, and these guys feel that they're part of a team they feel like we're a family and I think that's the reason why they're, they're so dedicated and I'm trying to um, I'm trying to carry that ethos over to to Friars Inn uh, uh, because I'm, I'm I just I just wanted to continue I think Hemel needs a good feel factor you know it needs it's it's a town that's been through the mill and it needs to come back it needs to come back from that um, and it's tough it's tough but the people are beautiful and I love them I love them with all my heart I get a bit emotional because they are just the most beautiful people eh? And I'm starting to think about a Christmas story now, but I'll tell you that later. Really, they're just the most beautiful people, eh? And they all know that everybody gets free hugs. You walk into this pub, everybody gets free hugs. Yeah, it's another that. Hey, hey, hey! Fucking shit, shit's huge. Okay, so we're in uh, Friars in now, um, and this pub is um, completely different to that pub. The gimmick uh, at Monks is the beer. The beer and the cider is the gimmick. Uh, here at Friars. We didn't want to put the same kind of beer on, so we focused on craft beer, particularly stuff that's um, in keg. Um, but this pub, having the reputation that it did, we needed to establish a, a different kind of 
gimmick probably is the right word and um, something that could um, absorb the existing clientele um, uh, and and not steal from the other pub uh, from from Monks Inn because Monks Inn is Monks Inn is Monks Inn. It's got its own very very unique um, uh, client base, um, as much unique as the client base at Friars Inns. And so, you know, you don't want to lose your client base. You 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 want to you want to enhance their experience. Um, and it's had its problems. There's, the building is quite old. It also has a nightclub attached to it, which is uh, which has um, its own problems. Um, so we, the first thing I did when I got in here was establish a live music venue because I think Hamel has been lacking that to a degree, apart from an ex exceptional live music venue in Apsley called Oddfellows and uh, Brett Bull uh, is a, a decent guy he knows his business um, and you know he's 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 nailed it when it comes to live music his his uh, client base is exceptional uh, the pub has a brilliant reputation he's and and he's uh, he's got a rather mature um, clientele there um, which is which is always a bit easier uh, me being me I love to do stuff that's different and what's lacking in Hamel um, was the alternative music venue you know we're talking scar and two-tone and reggae which is my first love and uh, punk rock which is my second love um, and potentially uh, the whole metal scene as well there, there isn't many places in Hamel for the for the people to go to so having the own, only decent pool tables in Hamel uh, we changed the beer up a bit um, uh, we took away the, the macro stuff because I think they can get that everywhere else. I don't want to say anywhere else. They can get that everywhere else. And so we put something even more different here, more different different to what is at Monks, but um, and and different to what they're getting everywhere else that they're walking into in, in the old town. Um, and how's it doing? Well, it's, I won't lie, it's struggling, you know. We've put these, this music on, and um, you know, you, you, there there is an element of people people demanding music, but uh, when it's there, you, you don't see them. So I'm a little disappointed. I won't lie. It doesn't mean we're giving up. I can give you a, a perfect example. When we uh, we're going to open up the kitchen in this place, which we got the licenses for and everything. Uh, we advertised that we were going to make pie and mash one of our main dishes and we had all this advice from everybody and rightly so telling us telling us that they need to that we need to get London pie and mash because you don't apparently get better pie and mash Oi! <laughs> Oi! Get off! Sorry because apparently you don't get better pie and mash than you do in uh, in London. Hang on one second. Mate. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. That's George. So with all these people telling us you have to go, to, you have to get London pie and mash. Don't make your own because you won't beat it. You want pie mash and liquor. So we sourced a. So we opened up the restaurant, we sourced uh, pie and liquor, mash you can make yourself. We sourced pie and liquor from uh, Manzi's, the second most famous pie and mash and liquor store you can, you can get in, in the whole of, of London. And we brought it in and we advertised that it was in, not a soul, not a soul came. We made our own pie and it started selling better than the London stuff. So 
it's it's you've got to there's a fine line you know you you can listen to people who uh, another example would be within the skull community we had a lot of people turn around and and say get this band and one of them was the jewelers the jewelers are huge you know and and all those people on, on social media were saying yeah we're prepared to pay 20 quid a ticket or 30 quid a ticket to get them but even that wouldn't cover because these guys are four five grand a night you know I, I would I would need to get to fill this pub 250 deep at 20 quid to afford those beds and then I'd still have to take some of that money out of my own pocket but the problem that I have is we've got all these really good bands on scholar bands two-tone reggae punk rock indie uh, mod stuff everything but the people the people aren't coming so when they start to support the local bands that we have in here the garage bands that kind of stuff when I start to turn over and I can feel more confident that uh, uh, that we've got that support then I will I'll start tapping those bigger bands but uh, I, I don't have I don't have the confidence to do it yet. Uh, so the pub is doing okay. Uh, it has got a decent uh, uh, base, a client base. Uh, much more football orientated. The pool tables are a, are a big part of that. The nightclub, when we have special functions on, um, uh, does okay. It doesn't do fantastic. It does okay. You know, people panic that we're going to close it down, but then when we open it, they don't support it. It's that kind of thing. So I'm walking on a fine line of sanity with regards to to fries in because I don't know whether I, I should stay or should I go now. There's a song in there somewhere, a punk song and all. Uh, so we're doing all that we can. We're, we're spending money on social media. We're, we're we're putting flyers out, posters out, uh, and we're just waiting, waiting for the for the crowd to come. We've got some exceptional bands coming in. In fact, uh, next week Saturday we've got nine 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 in. And if this is a later, if this is a later, if you're viewing this after that weekend, I'm going to tell you that it was it was a fantastic it was a fantastic gig. So it's doing okay. It's not doing great, but it's doing okay. Uh, and I'm not giving up on it yet, but it can't go on. Let's put it that way. It can't go on like this. Hi. So, of course, you don't get anywhere on your own. You've got to have uh, good partners. And apart from the business partners that I've had, I'm running solo at the moment. Uh, not through any discourse, purely because... Uh, the pub industry is difficult. It takes its toll on you, uh, and so it's understandable that you know that people uh, have life choices to make. Even I have uh, choices to make, and then and I'm going back to the city to work for a normal nine to five. Uh, I'm just lucky that uh, my staff. Uh, I have a good staff base uh, who. Uh, can keep things going and that's the most important thing is we want to keep it going because it's good for the community it's good for Hamel it's good for it's good for the the misfits it's good for the it's good for the geeks it's good for the beer tickers it's good for the LGBTQ community it is it's good for the community and it makes it adds a good feel factor to to individuals who frequent us a hell of a lot uh, but I couldn't have done it without a few key people camera number one um, who I mentioned to you earlier donated uh, a fair bit of glassware to help us going that saved us a fair packet um, and then uh, I have to make a very very loud mention of the decorum uh, council in particular the licensing division in licensing wendy particularly has been an absolute pillar of strength to my pub 
businesses uh, her very calm and and factual tones at the end of the phone or an email have been invaluable to us the fact that the estates division has been very forthcoming in giving us um, use of the space out here which everybody uh, is very critical about because it doesn't get used I understand why the council are worried about committing to the space because right now there's discussions around what they're actually going to do with the place um, the old market square lacks a lot of activity but I want to point out that since Monks has been open every single of one of these shops that were opposite us bar one was empty and since we've started now the uh, shops have been filling up decent decent food takeaways and when I say decent I'm talking about Hellenic Hem the Greek place I'm talking about Triple B the Caribbean place I'm talking about uh, Manny's Kitchen which is Italian the food that we're getting over here is restaurant value and and uh, I want to point out that people are welcome to bring their food in here since we're not doing food I encourage people to 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 shop locally um, we've had a severe lack of support from the council in that one respect but um, in helping my pub to grow they've indirectly helped this particular area to raise the bar and come summertime this place is going to be ramped you know you'll see people out here we're getting car we've got hot rod car shows out the front um, so we have so we have a decent car show car uh, uh, clubs meeting here and from our good friend when we have the two-tone when we have the two-tone shows on here uh, we have our good our good friends from the gaffer clothing store uh, in the Marlowe's which has the best range of scar two-tone uh, mod clothing out you know we have their scooter club coming down here and meeting and, and helping the business uh, the pool the pool teams we have a pool team in our who are I consider a partner because these people go out of their way to support us you know they will go out and, and, and encourage people to come and have functions here they will go out uh, and encourage uh, clubs to come and party here um, and then of course my partnership is with with um, uh, the local businesses so uh, Costa from Hellenic Hem um, and the rest of them up there they, they, these guys are we're all a partnership and a business in this place uh, but my, my punters I'm going to say are the ones who I love the most they are um, I do I do consider them a partner and um, sorry I, I struggle to when I talk about them I struggle to to hold my emotions back because they they are the, just the sweetest people around you know um, without without them I actually I don't even think I'd be alive you know the the wishes the, the well wishes from when I was sick they were phenomenal and the community no pub can survive without a community and that's the reason why I try and look after the community and we do a lot for charity for the community you know last Christmas we um, Salvation Army didn't have any drivers they didn't have a major so they couldn't donate they get they had lost this is the sign of the times last Christmas they had over 400 requests for assistance through Christmas we're talking food Christmas presents clothing and they do this through the local schools so what they do every year is they take all the donations that they get into the chapel they segregate them and they put them into parcels and they will get a school come to the Salvation Army and say we have 40 families that need help this year can you assist and that's what they do they couldn't do it this year we did it for them in this pub here I told you that 
uh, we had one of our punters, and I'm going to tell you a great story. This, I will get emotional. We have um, one of our punters. He's a chef. People will probably know who he is. Um, one year, he um, it was Christmas, and he came into the pub, and he was on the verge of being kicked out of his flat. He was unemployed, he's disabled and unemployed at that time as well. And he was about to be kicked out. He was about to be evicted from his flat on Christmas Eve. And he came in and... Um, he told his story in the pub. And within minutes, two other members of the pub, um, two other members of the pub, walked outside and they came back inside and they said, "Here," yeah. and they gave him five hundred quid. And so when I was discussing the dilemma that um, that Salvation Army had. He said, I want to pay, I want to pay it forward to it. I want to pay what they did for me. <clears throat> Sorry. One second. I want to pay that forward. And um, so he volunteered to cook for over 30 people, which he did all on his own. I won't lie, actually that's a lie, he had help, he had people helping him prep, but I'm going to say for the most part, he'd done it on his own, he came in here the day before, Christmas Eve, he'd done all his prep in that kitchen, and uh, we liaised with the Salvation Army, and they, and they gave us a list of people who some of my staff went and fetched and brought in here, and we gave them a Christmas lunch. And we gave them Christmas gifts, and we even done. We were even contacted by Bernardo's, the children's charity, and we had to do about eight uh, takeaways for them. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a child not having a, a Christmas meal or Christmas presents on Christmas Day? Well, I had my community and my staff volunteer to work Christmas Day to make sure that that didn't happen so they didn't happen they were working mate and they made it happen they really really are just the loveliest people in the world and um, anybody who has a bad thing to say about Hamill, well, let me tell you something. If any town had half the amount of spirit and heart that this town has, then you would understand. You would, you would, you would, you would be able to appreciate what, what draws me to stay here and keep this business going. I'm not, I haven't drawn a salary in two years. That's why I have to go back to the city. I, I, I earn nothing from this business. But I'm so determined to keep it going. Because the community rely on it, you know. They, and they need it. They need a place where the different, the different can go. They need a place where... Um, um, where the ostracized can go, they need a place where the bully can go, they need a place where they can feel the love. It kind of leads perfectly into why I'm so super proud of winning Community Pub of the Year. Um, because that's not an award for the pub. That's an award for the people. That is what they earned. I didn't earn that. I just gave them a, a drinking hole and a center of respect for them to congregate 
but the charity comes from individuals and it comes from the heart and a building doesn't have a heart apart from the fact that the people inside it become their PT home so so winning community cover the year is a something that I want to thank camera for recognizing and I know that it's the camera community that have voted for that so that recognition is is for themselves and for the, the other people that drink there because of the fantastic work that they have done you know we've mentioned the Salvation Army dinners we've mentioned the luncheon we've mentioned the donation charities but the other business partner um, who found a home um, at uh, Monks Inn is the uh, DMR this is the Decorum Motorcycle Riders Club and the charity that these guys do every week every month is phenomenal they collect donations at our place and they ride out to Watford General and they look after patients who are stuck at um, stuck in hospital during those key moments like Christmas and Easter and all that kind of stuff. You know, people who are having a hard time in life. What they're doing is they're paying it forward. And uh, I, uh, I'm just ever so grateful for the, for the community of the Pub Award because, it, you know, I can stand up there and tell these people how wonderful they are, but it's like a father of, of a child. You sit there and you tell him, don't do this, I love you, I love you. But when somebody else says something like that, then they start to take notice. And that's how it feels for me. This is recognition for uh, what these people have done over the last few years, of how they've paid it forward to their own community uh, and it means the world to me. You, you pat my baby on the back and, and you make me a very, very happy man. And I, it's, the, it's the foundation of my fight. It is my fight song, you know. People, people talk about a fight song or a reason to go on. It's the people. It's the community that make me want to go on because they are worth it and lovely, lovely people and I, and I love them and I thank them and they are special to me and uh, as much as I call them, we, we have a bit of banter and I tell them that they're shit and they tell me I'm a shit landlord and the pub is shit and there's shit beer and everything like that. The truth of the matter is that I absolutely adore them. And they are the best people in Hertfordshire. And that's the thing that I'm proud about. Because I, I might have community pub of the year, but I also have the best punters of the year award. And I have that every single day that I walk into that pub. So, screw you. Love you lots. Cheers.